The Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, announced on Wednesday that approved new retail price for petrol for the month will vary between 140 Naira 80 Kobo and 143 Naira 80 Kobo per litre price band. The new price arrangement replaces the previous price band of 121 Naira 50 Kobo and 123 Naira 50 Kobo per litre announced by the agency for June of 2020. The regulatory agency said after a review of the prevailing market fundamentals in the month of June and considering marketers' realistic operating costs, the PPPRA decided on a new pump price band of 140 Naira 80 Kobo to 143 Naira 80 Kobo per litre for the month of July, uh, the new retail price band for uh, petrol for June uh, petrol. The ex depot price for collection includes the statutory charges of bridging fund, marine transportation average, national transport allowance, and administrative charge. All marketers are advised to operate within the indicative prices as advised by the PPPRA. And joining us is energy expert Israel Aye to talk about uh, this new development. Good to have you, Mr. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. A few days ago, uh, the PPPRA said there was no going back on the pump price. What informed this new change anyways? Um, when you say no going back on the pump price, uh, you're probably referring to the concept of the price cap. Yes. Or indeed, um, what is, is otherwise referred to in some parlance as a price control. Correct. Uh, that is the long-term objective, apparently. Uh, but again, uh, we're, we're probably making <laughs> progress installmentally. Now, remember that where we're coming from was full uh, price control, full um, uh, regulation, particularly of the PMS, and I believe the DPK, which is kerosene, um, at some point. Uh, what was the case was the government through its uh, through the nmpc and its uh, subsidiaries um should i say arbitrarily fixed petroleum uh, pms prices and if there was a difference between what that price was and what it is uh what uh, the the market uh, uh, cost was then government paid that however what appears to have been entrenched now is that uh the government is going to use what is referred to as the uh, price mod modulation template to calculate prices and not pay any form of subsidy. Mm. We were hoping that this would uh, carry on to full uh, removal of subsidy at the very minimum, or indeed the regulation of the downstream. But unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Right. Uh, not even the part, even not not even the passing of the regulations. Uh, the, the the regulations has helped. Because what the regulation gave with one hand, unfortunately, took just right next to the other. Mm. So what's the implication of this decision on Nigerians, you know, the marketers, different people at different levels? Well, which is probably the point some of us have made that uh, if we were to realize the potential of the downstream, the Nigerian downstream, energize the economy and truly create wealth, then we need to you know, bite the bullet uh, and take the, uh, the, the, the bull by the horns, as we say, and fully deregulate. You see, the foundation for the, for the regulation of the downstream is in the law. And that law is still in place. We're talking about Section 6, Subsection 1 of the Petroleum Act, which mandates, authorizes the minister to determine or fix oil prices. And it is pursuant to that that you are, we're seeing all of this happen, right. you know. And so uh, as long as that is in place, uh, we will continue to see, uh, we will continue to see the, I mean, these kinds of interventions. And the interventions are, are potentially well-meaning. But my attitude is if we look at what we did with, uh, we, if we look at what we did with uh, telecoms, okay, and just sort of took, took the bull by the horns, deregulated, Eventually, supply was able to regulate price. You know, and that's what, that's not what is happening. We have a window in time to allow that to happen because until we have functional refineries in country, 
that are producing uh, PMS into the market, then we'll continue to have this sort of situation. Right. Now, let's take a, uh, while we are at it and looking at our context in Nigeria, is it possible to see a global oil price drop again from, you know, the global space now? Ah, uh, well, you know, you're talking about two oil prices, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the crude price of crude, and then there's the price of petroleum, uh, I mean, of, uh, of petroleum products. That is the products that are produced from crude. Mm -hmm. And... Again, I mean, the, if your, your question is, are we likely to see that price drop? Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, if I knew it, I probably would. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, you, 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 you can speculate, but you can never predict with any, any kind of certainty. Mm -hmm. So these prices will go up, they'll come down. Now, remember that one, when the... Uh, crude prices are low. The price, I mean, uh, the cost of buying petroleum products will be down. When the crude prices go back up, then they will be high. And so, until we can bridge that gap, and the, re the, the, the real issue for us is having a critical mass of, you know, refining capacity, expanding, especially, essentially, a refining capacity. That's the only thing that will bring the semblance of stability within that uh, space. So 140 we see today, quite frankly, is uh, not as high as it can get. Because if crude prices improved, assuming there was a war somewhere today, and I mean, I say, if, 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 yeah, if crude prices uh, go up, improve, then we're likely to see higher uh, prices for PMS. Hmm. Energy expert Israel Aye, thank you so very much for your thoughts and contributions on this matter. Keep safe out there. Thank you very much, you too, and thanks for having me.